rock y'all, non stop y'all, uh, to the beat y'all, the body rock y'all, the legs rock y'all, non stop y'all, uh, to the beat y'all, the body rock y'all, the legs rock y'all, non stop y'all, uh, to the beat y'all, the body rock y'all, the legs rock y'all, non stop y'all, uh, to the beat y'all, the body rock y'all, the legs rock y'all, non stop y'all, uh, to the beat y'all, the body rock y'all, the legs rock y'all, non stop y'all, uh, to the beat y'all. St Mary's Rugby League Club is probably the oldest remaining club in the district. It was first formed with the advent of Rugby League in Australia in 1908 and played teams from the Sydney competition on Sundays, mostly on Hackett's Paddock. There was a competition, Lancashire Cup, and that ran up till about 1927 and then was formed the Western District Junior Rugby League. And we played in that until um, Parramatta was formed in 1947. However, in 1956, it came to the attention of St Mary's officials that the club could no longer play out of Hackett's Paddock anymore. But there was no other ground in St Mary's at that time. So we had to look for particular areas to play on. We eventually went back to where we started Hackett's Paddock, part of it at the bottom part, which was owned by a fellow named Shaw, the pig farm and God only knows what and that's where um, we ended up because we made a deal with him. We bought that part of the property from him. That's where we were until 1980. The Saints played some of their best football on Hackett's Paddock, winning the A-grade competition in 1957, 61, 62, 63 and 65. Following the inclusion of Penrith in the Sydney competition in 67, St Mary's played in the Penrith District competition again proving to be one of the most successful clubs in the competition. Despite the Saints' on-field success, the league's club was experiencing a few problems. It wanted to apply for a liquor licence and found that it couldn't obtain one at its current location. Our solicitor said that we would never get a licence on there because there was close to a hotel, St Mary's High School, St Mary's Swimmer Pool, uh, St Mary's Public School, 
the bowling club, band club. There's too many clubs around there, like his premises, there was no way in the world he could be going to look for another property. In the end, the location of the new St Mary's Leagues Club was decided. I had to look for others. This site that we're on now was all vacant, so I sought out who owned it and eventually got onto the people that owned it and we made a deal. The Leagues Club was built in time to open its doors for patrons to enjoy Melbourne Cup festivities in 1982 and has since gone on and grown in leaps and bounds. It wasn't always so easy, however, with the club experiencing some turbulent times in the early 70s. There was three of us playing for the club at the time. It was uh, Tony Digger, Graham Delaneau and myself, who coincidentally were the three chairmen of the boards for Fort Warren. And we weren't sort of involved in the committee at the time. All we worried about was having a game of football and getting down the pub having a few beers. And Bill Webster uh, come and approach us one night in the hotel. And he said, look, if you blokes don't come and give me a hand, we're going to lose the uh, ground. And we said, oh, we sort of laugh it off a little bit. Anyway, it's, so we finally went, we, uh, we ended up standing for the, on the committee and there was uh, president, uh, secretary and treasurer. And when we seen the, the club was in the red, uh, we couldn't believe it, you know. Anyway, cut a long story short, um, we traded out off the debt that year and we started a few green in the black the next year and we just went from there. The club has certainly come a long way since the early days when things were done a lot differently. Used to go back to the uh, opposite the bowling club, there was a hall on the main street and we'd go down there Sunday morning, take the kegs down, the temp right, all the glass and everything and get it set up for when we finished the football, come back on the Sunday night there Stay there till you know, early hours in the morning when we shouldn't have stayed. But anyway, the bit, we still be there. We take the money home, have to come back the next day and clean the shed out. And I think the worst part was going home and counting the money, and it was all soaking wet and stunk. And, you know, and that was Monday night, Tuesday night, you go training. And I think Wednesday night was for quite a few years, was the only night I had at home. I mean, we used to do raffles, fish raffle on Thursday night at the pub. Uh, Saturday morning, there'd be the raffle outside Woolworths, then the raffle in the pub. Then we'd go over to uh, Warrington Hotel and do a raffle. Then we'd come back to Wagon Wheels Hotel, do a raffle. Then we'd get up the next day and play footy. <laughs> <laughs> so things have certainly changed now, probably for the better. One of St Mary's greatest ever local juniors, who later went on to become an Australian international, was John Cartwright. I know John Cartwright when a uh, lad by the name Mick Lewis was co captain coach then. Mick's since passed on. And Penrith wanted to call John up. He was playing A grade and he said, look, he said to Penrith, he said to Penrith, he said, I want to have a year here you know, under Mick Lewis. And he said, I'll come up next year. And John, true to his word, and they won the comp that year and he was a big influence on the, in the game when they beat Colt at the grand final, I think. One of Cartwright's favourite memories of playing with St Mary's was the now famous Green Shed, the original clubhouse for the Saints. You know, from, from when they first started, when, when I first started, I remember the, the old Green Shed, you talk of uh, players that, that played there years gone by and they remember the old Green Shed and the ground in the, in the middle of a town. And they've, they've moved now, of course, where we are tonight. I mean, it's just got a great history. A, a lot of players have been involved there. It's a great breeding ground for kids, and when you play with St Mary's, it's really sort of probably bred into you that the uh, you know the, the, what 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 it means to play there. When we had to move from Victoria Park, of course, we had to get another ground, and that was we were going to grade or over it and so forth and put what we could there. But then we had to have a bit of a clubhouse and change rooms and so forth, and the shed was virtually built with voluntary labour. Well the green shed's no longer there but um, you know even the, the I, I distinctly remember the, the toilet facilities <laughs> that, that belonged to the green shed they were, they were basically a tin shed. The ground you know it was a bit of a paddock in the middle of St Mary's and, and uh, through probably good management more than good luck they, they purchased the land where they are now and having a great uh, sort of uh, backing that the, the club uh, run by footballers, decided to put all their money into football and uh
Uh, you know, they've got great grounds now, great clubhouse, and really look after the kids that play at, at for the club. It was just magnificent, the foresight that uh, Bill Webster did have to, to buy the land out here and all the hard work that they did prior to uh, me getting involved with the club some 19 years ago. Uh, it just helped us. Uh, they set the groundwork and uh, we carried on the, uh, on the tradition of uh, making it a, a, certainly a rugby league club and uh, it'll certainly stay that way. Not only has St Mary's Leagues Club experienced tremendous growth over the years, its football operations have also expanded at a rapid rate. When I first came here we only had 14 sides of uh, junior league sides and we've built that up uh, over the years to a, a total of 45 sides which we now control and look after which is now the biggest junior league club in uh, the world. Our membership has grown uh, over the last eight or ten years from about uh, 3,000, 4,000 people up to 29,000 currently. Let's go.